Oh! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Come on, Silver. Life had been hard for Jim Ashwell and his wife, Allie, until they began to pan gold dust in a small stream that watered their land, and at last they saw hope of a home of their own in the days to come. After many weeks of hard and patient work, they had a small sack of the precious metal. They rode together toward the Canyon City Express office. What are you thinking about, Allie? Why, you haven't said a word in the past five miles. I was wondering what kind of curtains to put in the windows of the living room in our house. <laughs> oh, you better wait till the house is built. It won't take long now, Jim. We have the gold. We have some. Not enough. Nope. Oh, we'll need more than we got here, but we'll get it. We'll just send this to the Sacramento Bank and keep adding to it till we have enough for our house. Oh, it'll be wonderful, Jim. Yeah, Pally. Ah, that's what we've been dreaming of for as long as we've been married. I hope nothing happens to our gold. What would happen to it? Well, you know how Tom Bates lost his money when the stage was robbed. They say the Paiute Indians are getting mighty bad around here... And the independent express company won't take the responsibility for stolen goods. Well, there's no other way to send our gold to the bank. I suppose not. I figure we'd be better off to take a chance on the Paiute Indians and to let the gold pile up at the house where anyone might break in and steal it. I guess you're right, Jim. At least there'll be shotgun guards on the stage. Besides that, the Paiutes have already attacked one stage. It's not likely they'll do the same thing again. My, the town has grown. Oh, it sure has. Say, how would you like to spend a couple of days here and look around? See our old friends? Oh, that sounds fine. Where we stay? Oh, there's a hotel. We can get a room there. How'll that be? Good. Rain up right here. Oh, oh, oh there. Oh, there. Oh. Well, there's Shorty on the porch. Hi, Shorty. Hi, Jim, you old sidewinder. Howdy, Miss Ashwell. Hello. Hand any gold out to your place? Well, sure. Jim yeah. wanted to see about a room. Yeah, that's right. Can you put us up for the night, Shorty? Sure can. We've got a little business down the street. We'll be back in a few minutes. Fine. I'll have a nice room all ready for you. Good. Come on, Annie. 
Get up. Get up, then. Jim, you nearly told Shorty what we had in that bag. You're careless. Well, I don't reckon Shorty can do us much harm. Steve, I don't trust him. Oh, well, Allie, once this bag is in the express office, your worries will be over. Well, here we are. Ho there, ho. Oh. Steady, boy. You coming in with me, Allie? Yes, I, I'd like to. Howdy, Dimmick. Oh, hello, Jim. Howdy, Miss Ashwell. Hello. What brings you to the express office? I've got some gold to send to Sacramento, this bag. Gold, huh? We're sending it to the bank. What fine idea. Just fill in these slips, given your name and the value of the shipment. I'll get out the scales. You better hurry. The stage is about due. Do you think it's safe, Mr. Dimmick? We heard talk of Paiute raids on the stage. We had a little trouble, ma'am, but we don't look for any more of it. Of course, you send gold at your own risk. If you'd rather not... We'll send it. Here's the slips, Dimmick. Right. Jim, Shorty's watching through the door. He's followed us here. I don't like that. Oh, don't pay any attention to him. He's just curious. Shorty's probably here to see about the change of horses for the stage. He handles them for me. Here's your receipt. Thanks. We'll be around for a couple of days. I'll see you again, Dimmy. Right. Bye. Goodbye. She needn't worry about piles. <laughs> hey, boss. Shorty, you shouldn't snoop in like that. Mrs. Ashwell got suspicious. Oh, but, boss, I just wanted to find out if that was gold dust Jim and his wife had. When the stage leaves, it'll be a sure, good time. Sure, you leave that to me. Instead of snooping around, we'd all be better off. Jim's wife is suspicious. But how about that stage and the gold? Look, Shorty, I worked out this scheme. So far, it's paid off. Now, will you leave this to me? There's a stage now. You better get out and change the horses. Yeah. Howdy, Waters. Howdy with them horses, Shorty. Yeah, right away. Howdy, Dimmick. Got any express? You find it in the office, Waters. I'll get it then. Hurry up, them horses, Shorty. The stage pulled out of Canyon City with Jim's gold and the gold of several others who banked at Sacramento. Get up there! Get on there! Get up! horses followed the familiar trail through the hills for over an hour. Then, as the trail went over open country, the chilling sound of an Indian cry split the air. Indians! Here they come! Open fire on them! Get them, Hammond! They're coming from all sides! I was afraid of this! Ranger and his faithful Indian companion Tonto were riding uphill when they heard distant gunfire. One silver! They hurried in the direction of the sound, but it was a long ride to the crest of the ridge. Before they reached a spot that would overlook the plain, they heard many horses approaching. The masked man signaled a halt. Oh, silver! Oh, 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 and come fast. Steady, Silver. Dismount, Tonto. Lead your horse into this cut. <coughs> come, 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 boy. Come. We get out of sight until we see who's coming over the ridge. We plenty safe, well hidden here. We'll be all right if they don't see our trail. There they come, over ridge. Indians. Them fellas look like Paiutes. They're dressed as Paiutes, Tonto. They're wearing war paint. That's not in line with the treaty they've just signed. You break treaty. That'd be plenty bad. Otto, those Indians are carrying new repeating rifles. Ah, that's right. I want to know more about them. We'll follow the back trail and see what the shooting meant. Then we'll see where those men are heading. And we go now? Yes, yeah, steady, Silver. Not a ton of steady. Get them up, Silver! Silver! Meanwhile, the owner of the Independent Express Company sat before his desk in the Canyon City office. He looked up as the door opened suddenly. Dimmick! Dimmick! 
We've taken everything we had. Hallie was right Hold when she on, said... Hold on, Jim. Hold your horses. Who's done what? The stagecoach was held up. The Paiutes did it. They killed the driver and took the gold dust. Easy now, Jim. Let me have the details. Where'd you hear about it? A rider came in with the news. You say a rider came in? How many people has he talked to? There's a whole crowd around him. He's over at the marshal's office and he's all telling right, him... All right, Jim, all right, I see. I'll take care of things. Oh, great day. How can you be so calm about it? I'm getting used to Indian trouble. But my gold was on that stage. You talk like it was nothing at all. I'll do all I can, Jim. Now, go along. Let me figure things out. All right. And I don't aim to take this lion down. If you don't do something, Dimmick, I will. <laughs> uh, let's see. Four and six is ten. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The total is right. Now for Friday's schedule. The amount of 50,000. Come in. Oh, it's you, Shorty. Hey, boss, I got to talk to you. What about? Boss, I figured I need an alibi. Tiny's gun went off accidental. No water's the yeah, driver. Yeah, Jim Ashwell was just in here and told me. He was right head up. What's all over town? I'm worried about it, Dimmick. They get to checking on me. Don't they're... worry. If you need an alibi, I'll see that you have one. Was the job worthwhile? Yeah, there's a lot of gold besides what Jim had. We could clear at least 10000 on the deal. <laughs> It's a good thing I make it clear that the customers use my stage line at their own risk. <laughs> get out. Let me get to work. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had followed the trail of the stagecoach thieves as far as possible. It led to a hill in the rear of a hotel in Canyon City. Strange place for pirates and war paint, Tonto. Ah. Plenty strange. The trail seems to go right into that brush. And it not come out on the other side. Said a big fella. We'll dismount and make a closer inspection. Uh -huh. The masked man found a hole concealed by the brushwood. A large hole. Large enough to admit a man and a horse. Like a tunnel into the hill, Toto. Uh, we go in there? Tonight, Toto. After dark. Meanwhile, we'll see if we can learn anything in town. Several townspeople surrounded Jim Ashwell and his wife as they argued with the marshal in front of the lawman's office. But you're the United States Marshal. You know I am. Then do something. Get these coyotes that robbed us. That sure like to, Jim. Did you see there's certain government rules? Government rules? There's a rule against robbery and murder, isn't there? Yep. Then what are you going to do? How many times are you going to let these Indians attack the stagecoaches? Well, you see, it's like this. Where the Indians are concerned, the Army's supposed to handle things. And why doesn't the Army take action? This is the third time a stage has been held up. It takes time. We've got to be mighty careful in dealing with the Indians because of the pact. We've got to be mighty sure the Indians are to blame before we can act. You mean, Tom, what about our gold? Well, I'm working on it. Uh, no. Matt, I want to speak to you, Marshal. Where'd you come from? What's that mask mean? Maybe he's a thief. Teddy, I just want a few words with you, Marshal. Get your hands up. Hold it. I'll reach for a gun. There you are. I'm not an outlaw. I simply came to tell you about the men who robbed the stage. I'll investigate my own way without the help of any mask, hombres. Boys! I want all of you to join me as special deputies. You willing? Yeah. All right, then. First thing to do is to capture this masked man and hold him for questioning. Marshal, you're mad. Hey, I'm hey, sorry. Look out. Get him. He's making a break. Wait. Here, here, horses. Come on, Tuttle, break away. This way, Tuttle. Come on, Tuttle. Let's go. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger tried to give the marshal information about the attackers of the stagecoach, he found the lawman unwilling to listen. In fact, the masked man had to flee to avoid capture. The marshal shouted to those around him. That masked man knows plenty. I want him. We got to get horses. Well, get your horses and get after him. Bring him here. What's happened here? What's all the excitement? It's Dimmick. Hey, Dimmick, we got a lead. There's a masked man around here. He seems to know something about the stage robbers. I heard that they were Piot Indians. Well, whatever they were, that masked man can help us. We're getting out to locate him. Uh, tell me about that masked man. I'll tell you about him when he's captured. Come on, boys. Let's keep going. All right, come on. Come on. The Lone Ranger had no difficulty keeping away from those who hunted him. After dark, he went to the opening in the hill behind the hotel. There with Toto, he entered the cave. This is a larger tunnel than I thought. Ah, it's plenty big. We'd do better if we had a light. That would make us an easy target for anyone outside. Oh, we find way in dark. Did you see anyone enter or leave this cave, Toto? No. We didn't make a mistake in leaving the horses outside. Uh, Law still think Paiute attack stage? Yes, Toto. Uh, that's bad. Yes, it could lead to war. Wait. What matter? There's a light at, at the head of us. Seems to be just beyond an open door. Uh, you see it? Door wide open. Follow me. Wait. Wait a minute. Through that door. Ah, fellow inside. See what it is? He named Dimmick. Yes, the man who owns the express line. Look around him. Saddles, clothing. Ah, it ended in clothing. War bonnets, buckskin jackets. Just like those the pirates wore. Ah. Toto, now I know. What that? This cave leads to the cellar of the hotel. We've got to get out of here. We have a lot to do. Hold it. Hold it. I got you covered. I'll make a move and I'll let you have it. You came up as quietly as an Indian. Yeah. You're involved too, huh, Shorty? Oh, so you know who I am, huh? Yes. You own the hotel. Well, now, ain't you the smart one? Well, I happen to know who you are, too. You're the critter the marshal's looking for, the mask hombre. What are you going to do about it? First, you can shuck those guns. Now, draw slow and toss them to the ground near my feet. I hoped you'd say that. Huh? I'll draw, all right? Hey! No, oh, my arm! What's that? Fix him, Tonto. Me fix him. Get him, Dimmick! Good work, Tonto. Come on, Shorty. Come on, Tonto. Out of here fast. Uh. Get the saddle, Tonto. Stay big fella. Get him up, Scout. Come on, It was later the same night. Dimmick was at his desk. And Shorty, the hotel owner, sat nearby. Confound it, Shorty. Why didn't you shoot as quick as you saw that masked man and the Indian? I wanted to see how much they could tell. They know plenty, Dimmick. Uh, uh, instead of having them out of our way, they're still around. You've got a wounded arm. Fine thing. How can you manage the hold-up tomorrow with a wounded arm? Don't worry about that, boss. I can manage. It's just a scratch. Lucky you didn't get your head blown off. You going through with the plans to stop the stage again tomorrow? Yeah. You take charge as usual. I'm not worried about tomorrow... What are you worried about? That mask man. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, acting on their newly acquired information, went into the hills where the Paiutes lived. They were shrouded by darkness not far from the council ring where a great fire lighted the painted bodies of the Indians. Who's the chief, Tonto? Him named Buffalo Rider. Him sit over near fire. Oh, yes. This bad time to speak. Indian plenty angry. Well, we've got to speak to him, Toto. That wouldn't be smart. Huh? Who are you? <laughs> Guess you've forgotten me, haven't you? McMillan, the traitor. That's right. I'm proud that you remembered. I'll never forget the last time we met Mac. How are you? Uh, fair enough. How are you, Tonto? Oh, me all right. Mac, you know those Indians? You trade with them? Yep, been dealing with them for a long time. I keep in close touch with these Paiutes. Perhaps you can tell me something. Well, I could try. Have any of these Indians left their village in the past few days? Nary one, except a scout. I see. Indian, plenty angry. Well, sure they are. They've heard how everyone is blaming them for the stage robberies. Can't blame them. They're plenty sore at the white men. That's why I think it's a bad time to try and talk to Buffalo Rider. But I must talk to the chief. I need his help. For what? Mac, we can get the chief to help us. 
We may be able to prove that the Indians had no part in the robberies. Uh, that's worth trying. You want me to talk to Ryder? See if you can bring him here to me, will you? Well, I'll do what I can, but don't count on it. <laughs> Hello. McMillan has done it. He's bringing the chief here. Oh, that good? Maybe you'd better do the talking. We know what we want. Ah. Here he is. This is Chief Buffalo Rider. We come to you on mission of friendship, Chief. White man speak with forked tongue. No good. Guha. Next on. Dion. What's he say? He told the chief that we know his people didn't rob the stage. That true? Yes. You know Rob? Yes. You tell. Me see bad man kill. That won't do, Chief. Kula! Otto, tell him he can't take the law into his own hands. El Guso, Mudeto. I wish I savvied this talk. I'll tell him that we must catch the men who dress as private Indians and see that they're punished by the white man's law. Uh, do me how. Abe no te. Ma bene. Tell him he'll violate the treaty if he attacks anyone, even robbers, without the authority of the marshal. How me to? Uh, so be no. No hey. marker. No marker. What they say? Otto's no telling Buffalo Rider what I asked him to. I think the chief is taking it all right. Yeah, I sure hope so. Uh, him Come say. Come on. Him willing to help in any way. Good. I'll tell him what his Indians must do. The marshal was relentless in the hunt for the masked man. After an all-night search with his posse, he came home discouraged and exhausted. I'll put your horse away, Marshal. Oh, thanks, Joe. I'd appreciate it. Get you a couple hours of sleep, then we'll start out again. Right. I'll come by your place and get you. So long, Joe. See you later. Come on, boy. Here, come on, here. Get it, man. Come on. <sighs> Be good to rest for a while. Marshal. <laughs> what the... You, uh, you look tired. Miss, man. Well, oh, let's... I didn't come here to shoot it out with you. I've had a pussy looking high and low for you. I saw some of your men, but they didn't see me. How long have you been waiting here at my house? Since daybreak. I wanted to talk to you. If I once get the drop on Let's you... start on a different basis. You've mistaken me for a crook. Get over that idea. Who are you? Marshal... Have you ever heard of a man who was identified by silver bullets? Silver bullets? A horse named Silver. Uh, she, holy smoke. Please examine this cartridge. Silver. Why in thunder didn't you identify yourself before this? Why did you let me spend all this time hunting you down in connection with those Indian attacks? Before I asked you to help, I had to get more information about the attacks. You said you had something to tell me. Well, that was yesterday. What do you want to see? I want you to come with me. Where? To meet your posse. My posse, but I... A new posse. The largest one you've ever had. I don't savvy it. What do you mean? Chief Buffalo Rider and his whole Paiute tribe are ready to follow you. But my regular posse. What about that? You'll not need anyone else. Come along, Marshal. You're going to meet the Paiutes, and we'll go and watch for the stage at Twin Ridge. Later that day, the westbound stage came into town and stopped as usual at the express office. Everyone was surprised to see Jim Ashwell step forward, a carbine in his hand. Let me aboard that stage. Uh, hold on there, Jim. I'm going along, Mr. Dimmick. Those thieving skunks hit this stage, I'm going to be on hand to drop a few but of them. No just... use arguing, Dimmick. You've got only one passenger. Your garden driver might need some help. I'll give it to them. Jim, <laughs> Jim, wait a minute. Allie. I'm going with you. But Allie... I have a rifle and I can use it. If something happens, I want to be at your side. Help me aboard. All right, then. Cargo's all ready. Go send to get going. I sure hope you don't meet those pirates. If we do, we'll make them wish they'd never touched our gold. Yeah! All right, get him. Get him. Get along! Where are we now, Jim? About ten miles outside of Canyon City. This is my first time out west. I sure hope we don't meet trouble. There's Twin Ridge. We're going to head straight through. There's a rider coming down the bank. Jim, there's another. Indians! They're Indians! Get up there! Go they mean business. Let them have it. Give me that gun, ma'am. No, I can handle it myself. Let me get this rifle into action. Get up there! Go 
Charles? You got one of them. They're riding alongside the horses. They're trying to stop us. Drop them, Manny. Aim at those men. They're stopping the stage. Can't get a line on them. Too close in to shoot. Jim. Jim, there must be half a hundred of them. We're licked. We can't fight such odds. We can try. Keep at them, Jim. Get all you can before they get us. Here's another. You got one. Hey, look. White men are leading those newcomers. One of them's masked. Allie, look, that man with the mask. Look who's riding alongside him, Jim. It's the marshal. Hold your fire. The attackers were surprised by the sudden arrival of the real Paiutes, led by the marshal and the lone ranger. They turned, they tried to ride away. The escape was cut off by painted redskins coming from another direction with Tonto in the lead. The Lone Ranger and his followers closed in fast. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Throw down your guns. Wait, wait, hold your fire. Don't kill us. Throw down your guns and surrender. Make it fast. I think I'm going to Here are the leaders of the gang, Marshal. Come here, Dimmick. Now, wait. Bring that one, Tonto. Uh, you get in there. Now, hold on. Give me a chance to talk. Give me a chance to Hey, Marshal. That man runs the express company. I know that. This one runs a hotel. A fine pair of cutthroats. What have you got to say for yourself, Dimmick? He well, doesn't need to say anything. Marshal, every member of the gang is a white man. They're all made up to resemble the Paiutes, just as Dimmick and Shorty are. Hey, you skunks, you blame me a cause of war. You'll get plenty for this, Dimmick. So will Shorty. I can show you their hideout beneath the hotel, Marshal. I think you'll find all the stolen goods there. Including our gold? Yes, yes, Jim. I, I want to thank that masked man. Yes, and so do I. To think I had a posse again for you. Give your thanks to Buffalo Rider. He's sitting on his horse right over there. Hey, Chief, come over here and let us shake your hand. Oh, wait, wait, where are you going? Now, hold on. Don't go away just yet. Our job's finished, Marshal. Monsilver, let's come. Say, Chief Buffalo Rider, who is that man? Him not wait for thanks. Him Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.